key value pair data is everywhere in the real world. You might have a user ID as a key, which maps to a collection of attributes about a user which make up the value. Or you might have a barcode as the key, which maps to attributes of a product. And the typical way this is stored is in a JSON file, J-S-O-N. It's a file for storing key value pairs like that. Here's an example of what some JSON might look like. I've got a file, it's got a .json extension. And typically what you'll see in JSON is curly brackets containing key value pairs. The keys and the values are separated by a colon and each of the different key value pairs is separated by a comma. It's much like the dictionary data type in Python. At least that's what this looks like. But JSON can actually store any kind of data which is serializable. So it can store lists, it can even just store integers, it can store different types of data like that. But typically what you see is JSON looking like dictionary-like data with key value pair mappings. And the data can even be nested. So you can see here in this example, I've got one key pop-up, which has a key, which is another dictionary. And that has one key, which maps to a list of other values. And each of those is a dictionary with key value pairs. So overall, if we look down to that specific key there, we can say that this JSON file is a dictionary of dictionaries of lists of dictionaries. It's a dictionary of dictionaries of list of dictionaries, and it can be as nested as you want. The only thing that you need to do to make JSON valid data is to be able to turn it into a sequence of characters that can be reconstructed into the original format. And we call that serialization and deserialization. For example, if you wanted to send an image over the internet as JSON, we'd have to serialize the image, turning it into a sequence of characters. And then on the other end, we could deserialize that image to reconstruct it and turn that sequence of characters into an image again. If your data can be serialized, it can be formatted as JSON. Because all JSON data ends up as a sequence of characters, it's easy to send and receive. Because of that, it's one of the most common standard data formats used for sharing data across the internet. And that's actually what it was developed for too. The main language for sending, receiving, and manipulating data in a browser is JavaScript. And that's where the name JSON comes from. It's an acronym, J-S-O-N, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And now you know about it, you're gonna see JSON data everywhere.